morning all and today I'm looking again at the Ardu Solar PWM project and I've made some changes to the software and I've got uh, a good result on the voltage and look at that regulation that last digit it's only flicking between what one and four so we're looking at about four millivolts of regulation there that's pretty impressive now the changes to the software are largely down to O. Rubens, who went to some considerable lengths to put me right on a couple of uh, errors I'd made in the software. So thanks O. Rubens, I've made those changes and it's working great. Now today I don't want to get bogged down with the uh, code and I don't really want to get bogged down with the circuitry because today is all about the weather. 26 degrees it's going to be today and tomorrow Friday, 30 degrees. That's warmer than Ibiza. So let's get some banana plugs on this thing, take it outside and hook it up to a big solar panel because it's looking pretty good out there. So here it is, hooked up to my big 110 amp hour car battery. Now this voltmeter is saying 13.4 approximately, so I want to try and work out why that discrepancy. But uh, this is hooked up to the big 80 watt panel. We're in full sun at the moment and we do at least have regulation. What I want to do now is start putting a load on here and also get the scope onto the pulse width uh, pin of the Arduino and uh, see what we get. So I've now got the oscilloscope hooked up to Arduino pin 9 and ground and pin 9 is uh, the PWM output so this PWM trace is the right way up you're looking at uh, the high bit is when the MOSFET is on and it's very unstable it's surprising it was extremely stable on the small system in the workshop now that I've brought it out here and put it on a big 80 watt solar panel and a big uh, lead acid battery we're getting a lot of jitter on that um, pulse width. So it's regulating, but it's an unstable regulation. Now I seem to remember that this actually did happen when I had this old circuit, and it was down to this large capacitor across the analog to digital converter. When I first designed this, I just arbitrarily put this 6N8 uh, capacitor across there. And on the PWM5, while I was developing it, I had this very unstable um, pulse jitter and when I went to the new circuit which um, of course doesn't have the Zener it's just a potential divider and a 220 puff a very small capacitor that instability went away so I think that's the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of the um, old hardware here and go to this um, this version of the circuit but uh, what I want to do now is check the transient response I've got a 40 watt light bulb on an inverter so that will probably pull a bit more than 40 watts uh, to power the inverter that's connected up to the battery and I'm going to switch that on and off and watch the scope trace so let's have a look at this I'll see if I can get a better shot of the scope now the sun's gone behind a cloud just temporarily so of course the pulse width has had to increase quite considerably to hold the battery voltage constant um, but there's still jitter there. I've got no load on at the moment. There's still a lot of that jitter So I'm just waiting for the Sun to come back out From behind the cloud Okay, the Sun's back out. I'm having to use two parasols to keep all the reflections off the scope, but it's still not a brilliant picture um, So what have we got? So a very short pulse in order to maintain the battery voltage um, at our 13.5 volt target well that's not surprising because there's no load so now let me switch on the inverter and the 40 watt bulb and see what happens to the trace so the bulb has come on the on time has significantly increased because we've got an 80 watt panel we're not going to get maximum power because this isn't MPPT so we may be getting about 65 watts out of that we're probably burning 45 uh, in the bulb and the inverter so we've only got about 20 watts to spare so lots of on time not much off time and um, 
still getting that jitter. Let's turn the load off. Now see that very slow traversal as it goes back to the bottom end. Settles down, no load on the battery now, lots of sunshine, so very short pulse required to keep the battery at a constant voltage. Let's turn the bulb on again. On it comes. The inverter comes on and then the bulb comes on a little bit later, that's why there's that delay. Slow traversal up to this longer pulse width. Turn it off. And that slow traversal back to the short pulse width. And the reason that's slow is because of the way the code works. The code is incrementing the PWM value once per loop. And it's running at about 100 loops per second. So it takes two and a half seconds to fully run from one end of the scale all the way back down to the other. Let's see what happens to the voltage when that's happening. So I've got this 13.4 volts. Um, let's turn on the lamp. Now that dips and stays dipped. So actually it's not holding that voltage very constant. It's uh, gone to a, a lower set point voltage. But watch what happens when I turn the lamp off and remove the load. Get quite a bit of overshoot there. On the basis that this settling is settling at about 0.43, it went up to about 0.53. So a tenth of a volt of overshoot. And there was probably more than that. I'll just try it again. So that's with the lamp on. Let's turn it off. Yeah, it's hard to see because it's quite a slow update on this meter. But there is definitely overshoot there. And that's because the pulse is traveling so slowly. So things we can do to improve this would be to for removal of a load, we can increase the time, uh, sorry, increase the speed, reduce the time that it takes for that pulse to drop down to its uh, smaller value by introducing a sort of proportional element. So if um, the target value is a long way away, rather than stepping one step at a time, we can step in larger leaps. And then the other thing I'm going to do is get rid of that uh, 6.8 nanofarad capacitor and go to the 220 picofarad which did seem to solve the problems with instability in the uh, pulse width. Now just one other observation um, with the load on so 45 watts or so of power being pulled from the battery we've got that high long on time of the MOSFET to cope with that the sun's going behind a cloud now so it's getting even longer to try and maintain the battery voltage um, there's a fair bit of power flowing through the system. The 80 watt solar panel is probably uh, producing that 45 watts and this diode is hot, very hot. And that's one of the reasons that the diode on the PWM5 was mounted externally because it gets quite hot when there's a lot of power flowing through this device. The MOSFET doesn't because of its very low on resistance. So that was able to be sealed inside the heat shrink and never really caused a problem. But the diode does get hot. Now one of the reasons I put the diode externally and some distance away from the controller is that I'd always intended that this diode could be removed so the wire could be cut, shortened and the diode taken out of circuit. The diode does two things. It works as an anti-back feed diode. Well some solar panels will have an anti-back feed diode. These large panels tend not to, they tend to have bypass diodes, so you probably would need an anti-back feed diode in this situation. But this diode also protects against a short circuit situation, which is that with this powered up on the battery, the MOSFET has a body diode pointing this way, so that if these two connections here short, then it will put the full current of the battery through the MOSFET and blow it. So the diode protects against a short circuit at this point here. Now I've just brought my uh, multimeter out and I've hooked it across uh, the battery connections and it is disagreeing slightly with this meter down here. So this one probably is reading low because it's set a bit low. So it does seem to be regulating the battery voltage at the same 13.48 that I was getting indoors. But if I turn the load bulb on that is dropping down. Uh, we've still got a 50 millivolt discrepancy between the two, but 
it's uh, a bit closer on my DVM. But despite the problems, this is working. This is acting as a solar charge controller. It's regulating the battery voltage. It's uh, responding to changes in load. If I uh, put a load on, the pulse width responds. Take the load off and it responds the other way. This is a beautiful example of feedback control. Negative feedback, of course. So I'm pretty happy with that. All things considered, um, I think I'm going to call this a 0.9, 0 0.9 version of the charge controller because it really isn't quite um, at a point where it could be released. Um, I am looking at um, putting all this on GitHub, um, although now I'm actually more keen on the idea of Google Code. So when I've um, introduced the slightly different hardware and uh, got rid of that instability, I'll call it a 1.0, I'll put the uh, circuit diagrams and the code, the Arduino code, on Google Code and then uh, people can start building this for themselves.